No live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. These are the haunting words that introduce you to the chilling world of Shirley Jackson's horror masterpiece, The Haunting of Hill House. A tale so deeply unsettling it has ensnared the minds of readers for generations, weaving a narrative so rich in psychological depth that it transcends the constraints of time and genre. Welcome to the depths of Hill House, a place that might be more alive than the living. Hill House, not sane, stood by itself against its hills, holding darkness within. This ominous abode is the central character of our tale. It's a place where the walls whisper secrets and shadows dance with eerie life. The plot of The Haunting of Hill House begins with the arrival of Dr. John Montague, an investigator of the supernatural. He is drawn to Hill House, a mansion in a location that is never specified but is between many hills. Dr. Montague hopes to find solid evidence of a haunting, so he invites a team to accompany him. This team includes Eleanor Vance, a shy young woman who resents caring for her demanding disabled sister, Theodora, implied to be a bohemian artist suggested to be a lesbian, and Luke Sanderson, the young heir to Hill House who is host to the others. As the team settles into the mansion, the house seems to wake up, surrounding them with an oppressive aura of dread that intensifies with each passing night. They experience a range of phenomena, from knocking sounds, ghostly whispers, to sightings of spectral figures. The house seems to have a mind of its own, a consciousness that toys with its inhabitants, pushing them towards the brink of sanity. Eleanor, in particular, becomes the focus of the house's energies. She starts to feel a strange, disturbing affinity with Hill House. It's as if the house is calling to her, beckoning her to become a part of it. This connection becomes so strong that it's hard to tell where Eleanor ends and the house begins. The team's stay in Hill House becomes a nightmare as the line between reality and illusion, between sanity and madness, begins to blur. The chilling experiences in the house strip away their defenses, revealing their vulnerabilities and fears. Yet they persist, driven by a morbid curiosity and a desperate need to understand the unknown. Their journey into the heart of darkness that is Hill House is a journey into their own hearts, their own fears and insecurities. As each day passes, the line between the house and the inhabitants begins to blur, creating a terrifying reality. Fear is the relinquishment of logic, the willing relinquishing of reasonable patterns. This is particularly true for our main characters, each carrying their own shadows that seep into the blood-soaked walls of Hill House. Eleanor Vance, the protagonist, is a fragile soul, haunted by her past. She spent her life as a caregiver to her demanding, now-deceased mother. This past, marred with servitude and isolation, makes her susceptible to the lure of Hill House. The house preys on her longing for belonging, twisting it into something far more sinister. Then there's Theodora, a bohemian artist who is implied to be a lesbian, a fact she keeps hidden. Her secret, her shadow, makes her an easy target for the house's manipulative tendencies. Hill House plays on her fear of exposure, heightening her paranoia and fear. Dr. John Montague, the investigator of supernatural phenomena, is the one who brings everyone to Hill House. His obsession with the paranormal stems from his need for academic validation. His past is riddled with ridicule and disbelief from his peers. The house, sensing his desperation, uses it to orchestrate a symphony of terror. Lastly, we have Luke Sanderson, the heir to Hill House. He's a charming liar and thief trying to escape his past. The house, however, won't let him forget. It amplifies his guilt and remorse, making him question his reality. The characters pass, their shadows intertwine with the spectral presence of Hill House creating a chilling psychological horror. Their fears and secrets are used against them, making the house a mirror of their darkest selves. The terror doesn't just come from the supernatural, but from the characters' own minds. The lines between the haunting and their psyches blur, making it all the more terrifying. In this dread-filled narrative, it's not just the ghosts that are haunting, it's the past, the secrets, the fear of exposure and acceptance. Each character, a world unto themselves, becomes part of the horrifying world of Hill House. Hill House itself, whatever the cause, has been unfit for human habitation for upwards of 20 years. With these words, we're led into the chilling heart of the narrative, where the themes of isolation, fear, and the supernatural are as palpable as the cold stone walls of the house itself. Isolation is a constant companion in Hill House. Each character, in their own way, is cut off from the world. Eleanor, our protagonist, is isolated by her own mind, trapped in her anxieties and fears. 
The other characters, too, each have their own solitary battles, creating an undercurrent of loneliness that is as pervasive as the house's ghostly presence. This isolation is not just physical, but emotional, psychological, a chilling reminder that we can be alone even when surrounded by others. Fear, of course, is a constant in any horror story, but in Hill House, fear takes on a life of its own. It's not just the fear of the unknown, or of the dark corners of the house. It's the fear of oneself, the fear of what lies within our own minds. Fear in Hill House is a mirror, reflecting our own anxieties and insecurities back at us. It's a fear that's all too real, all too human. And then there's the supernatural. Ghosts, apparitions, strange occurrences. They're all part and parcel of Hill House's eerie charm. But the supernatural elements aren't just there for scares. They serve a deeper purpose, highlighting the character's own ghosts, their regrets, their guilt, their unspoken fears. The supernatural in Hill House is a manifestation of the character's inner demons, a chilling reminder that sometimes the real horror lies within us. These themes, isolation, fear, and the supernatural, are woven together to create a tapestry of horror and unease that permeates every page of the book. They're not just elements of the story. They're the lifeblood of Hill House, the shadows that lurk in its corners, the whispers that echo through its halls. The themes of the book are as haunting as Hill House itself, leaving readers with a lingering sense of unease. The concept of home is distorted within the walls of Hill House. The twisted architecture of this haunted mansion mirrors the warped, unsettling narrative that Shirley Jackson crafted over half a century ago. But Hill House is more than just a setting. It's a character in its own right, an entity that leaves a lasting imprint on its inhabitants and readers alike. The haunting of Hill House has left an indelible mark on the horror genre. It's not just the spectral apparitions or the eerie atmosphere that make this novel so memorable. It's the psychological terror, the slow unraveling of sanity, and the relentless questioning of reality that has made it a masterclass in horror writing. This book has cast a long, chilling shadow, influencing countless works of horror that came after it. Authors such as Stephen King and Neil Gaiman have cited Jackson's work as a significant influence, their own stories echoing with the echoes of Hill House's haunted halls. The novel's impact goes beyond the written word, inspiring various adaptations across different media. From stage plays to films, and even a critically acclaimed Netflix series, The Haunting of Hill House has proven its enduring appeal. Each adaptation offers a unique interpretation, yet all retain the core essence of Jackson's original narrative. This is a testament to the strength of the story and the timeless nature of its themes. The Haunting of Hill House continues to resonate with audiences because it taps into our primal fears. The fear of the unknown. The fear of losing oneself. The fear of the past that refuses to stay buried. These are universal fears that transcend cultural and temporal boundaries, ensuring the novel's lasting relevance. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of The Haunting of Hill House is the way it has redefined the horror genre. It's not just about ghosts and ghouls, it's about the horrors that lurk within the human mind, the darkness that can seep out when one is pushed to the brink. The Haunting of Hill House remains a cornerstone of horror literature, its chilling narrative echoing through the corridors of time. It's a haunting reminder that the most terrifying monsters are often not the ones that lurk in the shadows, but the ones that reside within us. In the end, we are left with the haunting echoes of Hill House. Like a specter in the night, the narrative lingers, casting long shadows on our thoughts. Let's take a moment to revisit the chilling tale we've traversed. We dove into the unsettling plot, a twisted dance of reality and illusion, where the line between the living and the dead was blurred. We met the characters, each with their own shadows, grappling with the ghosts of their pasts and the horrors of Hill House. We unpacked the chilling themes of isolation, fear, and the human struggle against the supernatural. We saw how these themes were woven into the very fabric of the story, creating a tapestry of terror that was as much a character as the inhabitants of Hill House themselves. We also discussed the lasting impact of this macabre masterpiece, how it has shaped the horror genre and left its indelible mark on readers and viewers alike, making us question the nature of reality and the depths of our fears. In the end, The Haunting of Hill House is more than just a ghost story. It's a chilling exploration of the human psyche, a mirror held up to our deepest fears and darkest secrets. 
Hill House, not sane, stands alone. But in its shadow we find ourselves more than mere spectators. We become participants in its haunting tale.